Howdy peeps and welcome back to yes yes another instalment um, yeah uh, this is definitely going on longer than I thought it would but ending line is in sight so we're good the Tamiya SU-76 self propelled gun complete build series and I think up till now there's probably about maybe two two or three hours tops that I haven't filmed and that has been things like doing the primer doing a gloss coat um, painting the wheels uh, you didn't need to see all of them um, so you know, we're getting there and as I say for me this is a fairly this is actually taking me longer than it would if I was just building it for me. So you can, by the time we get round to the end of it, you'll be able to judge how long it would normally have taken me to build this. Anyway, where we get to last time? Ooh, time for the extra light. Now we got the box out of the way. We can get rid of the glare. There we go. And I'll bring you in just a little. Oh, oh! Try and get the right button in the right direction there we go well not overly visible um, and it will show up more once the fl uh, flat coat goes down over the top of it last time we got all the uh, pin wash done picking out all the rivets raised and recessed details panel lines rip weld seams everything like that so today we're going to do the chipping and for this I will do sponge chipping um, it's an easy method it's controllable and unlike say hairspray chipping which can really quickly get away from you if you're not careful um, as I've found in the past uh, you can have huge sheets of paint just come off in one go if, if you're not careful with the hairspray technique, with this it you only get chipping where you apply it. So we'll show move tanky across there and zoom out a little so we can see more what we're actually doing. There we go. We have some reverse action tweezers, or as I call them, squeezers. So you push them, they open, you let go, they close some fairly close cell foam now this I believe came with a resin figure but you know the kind of foam you can see it there you go and our chipping colour <coughs> now the majority of the chips will be a, oh, oh, have an adjustment the majority of the chips on any kind of armoured vehicle will be a fairly dark brownie colour um, and an ideal colour for that is the Vallejo German Camo Black Brown. It's just a, a very dark brown, really, um, from the Panzer series, 7822. RLM61 is all the info if you wanted to know what it was. We'll give it a quick shake. Oh, oh yeah. I'll be a good boy. Don't want to get my nice shiny clean cutting mat all manky and mucky. So we shall switch over to the manky and mucky old cutting mat. Which has got all sorts of dubious marks and paint stains and god knows what on it. Oh, do I have a relatively clean mini palette? Oh, I don't think I do kicking about at the moment. Nope, that one's covered as well. We'll stick with this one, that'll do for now. So we're just going to, you can either tear off or cut off a chunk of foam. And I shall just cut off a chunk. Just to be a bit neater and... Uh, there we go. And something else I was going to say, <coughs> neater and more professional, but I'm nowhere professional, so there we go. And we just grab that in our squeezers, like so. Now comes the messy bit. Give the paint another shake. 
as these model colours do tend to separate quite a bit and you can see it is a really really dark brown with a little hint of red in there because if you if you've ever dealt with anything plant machinery wise so you know JCBs, diggers, tractors, that kind of stuff when they get chipped they develop uh, more of a patina where it is the very surface has gone and oxidized or rusted but excess flaky rust gets rubbed off and that is what we're trying to uh, accomplish with this actually I'll grab another piece of kitchen towel here's one I used for cleaning my glasses earlier so much like dry brushing get a little bit onto the kitchen towel and knock the excess off I'll just make sure I've got got it spread about on there a bit there we go and we take our model I will zoom in a little more Ooh. Ooh. there we go if I keep the model about there we can see what we're doing and we literally just go around dabbing on areas and surfaces where we think the paint would have gotten chipped. So obviously any sort of hatches, edges, front and rear fenders and mud guards especially, they're going to get beaten up. anywhere underneath I think mean, this will probably get covered by muck and mire but it's there so if there is any sort of visible gaps in the muck and the dirt and whatever we end up putting on there like the end of the fenders where they're pretty much just going to be paintless you can just uh, drag it across and pretty much paint the end of the fender brown. It's one of the, it's one of those things. It's you can go for realism if you've got you know, good reference pictures to go by. can go for artistic license with what you think looks good at the end of the day it's entirely up to you I will say one word of warning that it is easy to go too far um, it's better to underdo it now and then come back and do a bit more later if it doesn't look enough than it is to overdo it now and I have to kind of repaint things or be stuck with a model that looks over overly chipped general rule of thumb it is in combat these vehicles probably had a lifespan measurable in heck in the case of T-34s sometimes days but not weeks, months or years so they didn't actually last long enough to get too beaten up really um, certainly the smaller ones like these are pretty much any any tank that fired at one of these and hit it would just destroy it the armour is don't even think it's an inch thick most of the way around and with the open fighting compartment just the shrapnel would probably kill the crew or at least make them not want to be there in a hurry so we just add it around I'll say not all of the raised edges or but yeah I'm just Picking out certain 
certain bits that we think would get scuffed and beaten. We're going to need more paint as well. Again, this is one of those techniques where ooh, maybe we've got gun out of the way. The majority of the paint is oh, excuse me, I want to sneeze, I think. <coughs> oh, bless me. I do apologise for that. I aimed it away from the camera, thankfully, and the model. Uh, where was I? Yeah, we well, it's a technique where you do get quite a bit of wasted paint, as it were. Paint that doesn't make its way onto the model. Um, but it's an easy technique to do. It doesn't require any real skill or technique to learn. The only tricky bit is I say keeping it roughly accurate and keeping it where you want it which way if in doubt you can use a smaller piece of sponge or foam and um, keeping the amount of chipping sensible and subtle um, as I say it is easy to overdo these things oh, bloody telephone going off Never mind that can wait. These things always happen at the worst possible times. A couple of little chips of those. There we go, the answer machine picked up. So I know in the UK we get a lot of cold callers. Um, people calling up to sell you either life insurance or take part in a survey of some description or just random guff you're just not interested in um, it's, there are ways to avoid it but I can't be bothered I just don't pick up the phone um, add a few chips to some of the decals as well just to tone them down a little and tie them in so they actually look like part of the tank rather than something that's just been stuck on as an afterthought it doesn't take a huge amount to achieve that. Not too much. Yeah, loads of paint, loads of paint, go away. We're nearly done with this anyway. definitely get chipped is around any hatches or entryways or areas that the crew will generally move oh excuse me so we'll add a little a few chips of random flat surfaces as well more more about breaking up single colour now I'm going to get some right on the edge of my sponge one reason for cutting it rather than tearing it is you get nice square edges which gives us a square flat edge so we can get get some chipping around the edge of the driver's hatch that's going to be constantly banging open and closed. Uh, 
be a few on the gun as well. Nothing special, nothing major. front deck just randomly put about it if you can see them generally you especially when it's dark brown and dark green then you may be too much but anyway that is sponge shipping it's that simple as I said now what's up next? What can we do next? Well the tow cable still looks a little bright to me so we can tone that down a little with because I believe that things like tow cables at least during that period of time were heavily greased or well, not have but grease to stop them rusting because as soon as they start rusting and strands start breaking they pretty much become useless because as soon as you put any strain on it it's going to go ping so we'll give that another coat of some of the Citadel Shade Null Oil it's a very useful thing to have and literally just daub it on because we're trying to darken it down a little. We will add a little bit of rust to it uh, later. Um, just to add some, more just to add some colour variation. So it doesn't just look exactly the same colour. Or clean and shiny. Because people do expect tow cables on tanks to be rusty. Despite the fact that I said that they aren't. They would be replaced if they started to rust. Because the last thing you want is to be in a tank that gets stuck somewhere and needs a tow out and your tow cable goes ping. In the case of this I believe it also doubled as a track change cable so you definitely wouldn't want to be doing that if you throw a track and you can't actually replace it. Now as Gun rails would have been greased as well. We'll just pop a bit, a bit on there, a bit into the breech. Just so it doesn't all look clean and tidy. Oh, excuse me, a bit of a runny nose today. No idea why. It must be the weather. Let me just clean out the brush. On that side the paper has actually got a clean patch. There we go. So from now on, really, all the weathering process is, is just adding little bits, taking little bit, adding bits, taking bits away, just adjusting the overall look of the vehicle to how you want it. And now having done all that chipping, nice and brown and rusted, some places do get chipped freshly or regularly rubbed or cleaned so there are several ways of uh, doing that you can either do the same with a silver paint and very carefully you can use a pencil in this case a 4B or I've got an all, all graphite pencil which is a 6B is literally just a stick of graphite or if I can actually find it <laughs> yeah that's the trick there it is how's that 
it's a bit of luck. You can get, and I, I've got the Prisma Color. Is it a Prisma Color? It's a Faber Castell Polychromos, whatever. It's a silver watercolor pencil, and it's whiting out quite badly. But there you go. And I'll use this for now. Just I'll be more likely to use a darker color on the tracks. So to create a tonal difference between the tracks and the main vehicle. So we'll use the watercolour. Now to use it, generally it's just dunk it in water or have a little pot of water or a piece of damp paper. I'll actually do that for you. Move those out of the way. So we'll just ooh, grab some manky old brush water. So we've got just a little dampness because you don't need it wet. And as soon as it gets moist, the silver starts to come off. So we're literally I'm using that word again. So we're just going to run it across the very edges and the corners in certain areas just to give that freshly chipped or cleanly chipped look bit along the hinges as well because they're going to get worn and let's say there will be a couple of little areas with fresh dings around the tank a bit more moisture Make sure I'm actually in shot. And let's say, is there anything easier to control than a pencil when it comes to applying a product? I don't think so. It goes exactly where you put it. Again, we just run a little along the top of those hinges. the top edges down here again with this subtlety is what you're after don't make uniform Things so if you've done a stripe there you don't need to copy it on the other side it's when things start to look uniform with weathering that they start looking uh, shunky I, I don't want to say wrong because you know, if, if you bash both sides of the tank in the same place the same way chances are they're going to chip the same but chances of that happening are very slim and because I'm a dirty filthy old git I'm going to actually use use my tongue why not That's another fallback from being a brush licker is I also <laughs> lick these as well So we're keeping it in slightly different areas on each part of the tank so it doesn't build up to look the same. Obviously this will rub off quite easily because it is just watercolour paint on what is a gloss surface. So what we'll do pretty much before we do any more weathering specifically with the uh, pigments is we will fix this under a coat of matte or flat just just so it doesn't all uh, come off the next time we pick the tank up obviously make sure the gun cradle gets well 
well chip because that's going to see some serious abuse and we'll add some little fresh ones around the edge of the driver's hatch that would probably catch on things as you're going through underbrush and undergrowth. The tops of these would probably wear somewhat as the crew puts a tarp over the top every time it rains. And a bit of the back. Can we get the door and the, yep we can, there we go. As I say, nothing too over the top. Obviously also making sure to get both, get the toe hooks as well. Oh, dried out again. Because the toe hooks would get quite heavily worn. So we just make sure they have some All right, if I bring that up it's probably going to white out and glare but you should be able to pick out some of the chipping on uh, that side and on the front and it's all got Australian Sorry, <laughs> bad joke. And on that side, we're, as I say, we're just picking up and accenting things. Oh, there's a little storage box there. I'll just add a little, a couple of nicks to that. All right. And next, I've also just realised that the uh, return rollers haven't been done yet. They're still painted green. And where they rotate, and constantly rubbing against the track, it would wear off the paint. And these ones don't have rubbers on them. So we shall paint them in an appropriate steely colour. Uh, yeah, I can do that quick. It's not going to take long. And for this, I'll show you another technique. Get that out of the way so we don't end up with... Uh, you can see how many different colours I actually end up on these. Now, this is the AK True Metal Iron. This is a wax-based paint. Apparently it smells rather like boot polish and the bin just lid's just gone in the bin so we just squeeze out a little of that and rather than brushing it on oh oh stretch grab what I will do oh try not to get it all over myself because this stuff goes everywhere on that the uh, whiting out but there we go get it out that light well, I've got it on my thumb, that's going to go absolutely everywhere, so we'll clean that off. Just by wiping it off. And grab a cotton wool bud. And just get a little onto the cotton wool bud. I say this stuff goes a long way. That's probably a bit much actually. And I'm going to turn this light out because if anything it's a bit too bright and everything's whiting out I think so I just dab off some of the excess on a bit of paper and we just rub it on now this is a buffable paint so you can give it a buff and a rub and polish afterwards if you want it really shiny Uh, 
the same the thing we're not looking for a perfect finish as I was saying when I was painting the I think I said it's been a while now when it comes to painting the tyres the re one of the reasons other than the fact that I just prefer doing it that way that I do it with a brush is because if you get imperfections and brush marks in it it just adds to what looks like wear on the tyre obviously this does tend to destroy the cotton wool bud fairly rapidly that might just be me using cheapo cotton wool buds so if you're using more expensive name branded ones like some of the Tamiya ones they'll probably last quite a bit longer than these but hey These are about 50p for 200, so I don't mind if they don't last quite so long and I have to throw them out fairly regularly. See, this is one of. <coughs> Obviously, there are uses for the. especially the um, pointed Tamiya ones. They're very good for getting into small areas and cleaning washes out and all that kind of good stuff. Um, as I say, cotton wool buds, cocktail sticks, that kind of thing. Generally just buy the cheap ones, you don't need the expensive ones. All the modelling special ones. It's the same with some of the parts holders. You get the uh, I think is it Mr. Hobby do and the um, corrugated card ones. Uh, obviously, you know, if you want to buy them, buy them. I'm not having to go at the product or the manufacturer. You know, if they've seen a way they can make money. <laughs> They're going to, um, but they're basically the catch scratching posts that you can get out of the same exact same material. You just don't say Mr. Hobby on them, and um, <coughs> excuse me, you can get them from the pound pound shop or dollar store. So we've done that. We've got the. metallic done on those so what I will do next another off camera thing and I'll be quick because we're running out of uh, going over time is I'll give this a coat of flat varnish and then next time we can start on actually muddying it up so enjoy your modeling have fun rock on peace out and bye bye